I am Songita Paja, Assistant Professor of Bengal School of Technology, Hooghly. Dear students, today I am going to start with the topic on Drug Interactions Part 2. In my previous lecture, I have discussed about Drug Interactions Part 1, include the introduction and type of drug interactions, drug-drug interactions and mechanism of drug-drug interactions and pharmacokinetic drug-drug interactions and alteration of gastrointestinal absorption and complexion and adsorptions. Today I discuss about alteration of drug distribution, alteration of drug metabolism and alteration of excretion during drug-drug interactions. Now alteration of drug distribution. Displacement from protein binding site. This type of interactions may occur when two drugs that are capable of binding to the proteins are administered concurrently. They may bind at different sites on the protein that is also called non-competitive displacement. Now the binding characteristics one of the drug may alter. They may bind at the same sites on the protein that is also called competitive displacement. Now the drug that has greater affinity for the binding sites will displace the other drug from the tissue plasma and protein. Now the protein bound drug is not pharmacologically active but protein bound drug is gradually released to maintain the equilibrium and pharmacological response. The unbound or free from a drug is metabolized and excreted from the body. For example, warfarin with phenylbutazone. Both the drugs are extensively bound to the plasma protein like human serum albumin. Human serum albumin has defined binding sites. Now the phenylbutazone has greater affinity for the binding sites, resulting in displacement of warfarin and anticoagulant activity of warfarin is increased and risk of hemorrhage also increases. Concurrently, therapy should be avoided. Next example, warfarin with chloral hydrate. Chloral hydrate can displace warfarin from the protein binding sites. Similarly, ethylenic acid, mephenamic acid, nalidixic acid, etc. can also displace warfarin from the protein binding sites. So, their concomitant advanced administration should be avoided. Now, the alteration of metabolism. The stimulation of metabolism and inhibition of metabolism. First of all, stimulation of metabolism. Certain drugs can stimulate the activity of hepatic microsomal enzymes. This effect is referred as enzyme induction and the increased activity is probably due to enhanced enzyme synthesis resulting in increased amounts of drug metabolizing enzymes in the hepatic microsomes. Now, the enzyme induction will result in increased metabolism and excretion and reduce the effect of agent which is metabolized by the hepatic enzymes. For example, warfarin with phenobarbital. Phenobarbital increases the rate of metabolism of warfarin resulting in decrease the anticoagulant activity. Next example, digitoxin and phenobarbital. Phenobarbital can increase the rate of metabolism of digitoxin. One of the metabolism of digitoxin is digoxin and another active cardioglycoside, but its duration of activity is shorter than that of digitoxins. Therefore, it may necessary to increase the dose of digitoxins. Now, oral contraceptives with phenobarbital and rifampicin. Phenobarbital and rifampicin induce the hepatic enzymes and increase the metabolism of steroidal hormones like progesterone and estrogen etc and reduce the effectiveness of oral contraceptives and next example vitamin d with phenytoin and phenobarbitans vitamin d and steroidal hormones are chemically similar compound hence the disturbances of calcium metabolism and development of rickets development of rickets and osteomalacia takes place with the use of con anticonvulsant such as phenobarbitan and phenytoin etc Reduce the serum calcium levels are observed on long term therapy of anticonvulsant agent. This is caused as a result of vitamin D deficiency in our body. Last like example doxycycline with phenobarbital, phenytoin, and carmavagipine. Phenobarbital and phenytoin or carmavagipine can decrease the half life of doxycycline by increasing the metabolism of doxycycline by the hepatic enzymes. Now the inhibition of metabolism. If one drug inhibits the metabolism of another drug, it results in prolonged action and intensified activity. Alcohol disulfiram inhibits the 
inhibit the activity of alcohol dehydrogenase, thus inhibiting the oxidation of acetaldehyde, which is an ex oxidation product of alcohol. The, this is results in accumulation of acetaldehyde and development of characteristics unpleasant effect of disulfiram. Now, disulfiram is not selective inhibitor of alcohol or aldehyde dehydrogenase, but uh, exhibits several inhibitory actions that can result in development of drug interactions. Example like phenytoin and warfarin with disulfiram. Difers disulfiram by inhibits the metabolism of phenytoin and warfarin and isoniazide with phenytoin. Isoniazide also inhibits the metabolism of phenytoin so increases its toxicity level. Now alteration of excretion. First of all alteration of urinary pH. Alteration of urinary pH either die intentionally or occurring unknowingly can influence the activity of certain drugs such as acidifying agents. Mendelic acids are administered with methanamine to enhance the antibacterial activity. Now methanamine must be converted to formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is the active antibacterial substance. This conversion takes place at urinary pH 5.5 or less. Now the urinary pH can also influence the toxicity of certain drugs such as sulfonamide such as sulfadiazine in acidic urine. It may produce crystal urea. Alkaline urinary pH is required to reduce the incidence of crystal urea. Crystal urea means Crystalluria means it refers to the cloudiness of urine when the cause of cloudiness due to crystals found in the urine when performing a urine test. Another example sulfonamide with methanamine. The acidic urinary pH is required for methanine activity. This pH could cause precipitation of sulfonamides and produce crystalluria. Now salicylic acids with acidifying agents and alkalizing agents. Urinary pH will influence the ionizing, ionization of weak acid and weak bases. Thus affect the extent to which agents are reabsorbed and excreted. Now acidic pH and salicylates. Salicylates remain in non-ionized form in acidic pH and will diffuse back into the blood from the urine produce a prolonged action or intensified activity. Now antacids such as sodium bicarbonate increase the urinary pH and hence the excretion of salicylates. Now next anti-infective agents with urinary pH. Antibacterial therapy of urinary tract infections is influenced by the urinary pH. For example, tetracycline, nitrofurantoin, and methanamine are most active when urinary pH is 5.5 or less. For some drugs, streptomycin, kenamycin, and gentamicin, including aminoglycosides groups, are more active when pH in the alkaline range. Now, interference with the urinary excretion. For example, penicillin with probenicid. Probenicid can increase the serum levels and prolong the activity of penicillin by blocking their tubular secretion. Probenicid also decreases the renal excretion of other agents like aminosalicylic acid, methotrexate, dapsone and indomethacin etc. Thank you.